Project Auditor is a powerful analysis tool for Unity projects, introduced as a package in Unity 6.1. It is designed to help developers optimize performance and maintain best practices, as well as identify potential issues and bottlenecks in your projects. In this video, we're going to take a look at how Project Auditor can be used to optimize a project. It can be installed by going to Window Package Management and opening the Package Manager. You will find it in the Unity Registry in Unity 6.1. If you are using Unity 6.0, you will need to install the package by name using com.unity.project-auditor. Go to Window, Analysis and Project Auditor. Click the Start Analysis button. This took about 30 seconds for me. However, the analysis might sometimes take a few minutes or more to complete, depending on how large the project is. It has analysed my project for any issues which may affect performance, memory usage, load times, build times and other areas. It then displays all issues in an easy to read report. The analysis report can be saved out or reloaded at any time using these top buttons. Clicking New Analysis will overwrite any data that has not been saved and display a new updated analysis report. The issue breakdown shows all issues related to code, assets and project settings. You can see the overall issue amounts and they are categorised into severity using colours. Major in dark orange, moderate in light orange, minor in blue and ignored in white. It displays the top 10 issues so you can focus on those first. They are displayed by their severity and listed by the amount of items affected. If you have done a clean build of your project, it will display additional insights about your project build. The top 10 issues can be expanded and explain the details of the issue and a recommendation for ways to fix it. You can discover more about this type of issue by clicking the documentation button, which will take you to the Unity documentation specific to this type of item. Click more details to go into the relevant section and it will highlight where this issue is displayed. Let's take a look at each of the sections, starting with the code section. Code can only be analysed as long as there are no compilation errors. Fix all errors first before creating a new analysis. You can filter the data, for example by area if you want to just focus on issues affecting memory, CPU, GPU etc. By default it is analysing all areas. You can also group issues based on severity, areas, etc. Data can be exported in CSV format, either based on filtered results or all results, and be opened in external tools. Data can also be displayed based on categories, or on checking the group by button as a list, which then allows you to sort them by column headings. Click on an issue and it shows the details and the recommendation of how to fix it. Let's look at how we can use this to optimise the code. The first issue has a severity of minor, affecting memory. It shows the script name and the line of code where it appears. Double click on the issue to open the script in your IDE of choice. I am defining a new array in the script. These values are allocated to the managed memory. I could make the string array public and define them in the inspector. However, because it is only a minor issue, I could press the ignore issue button and the issue disappears. Note that the issue will be ignored for this session only. If you do a new analysis, it will reappear and will need to be ignored again. If you want to see all ignored issues, you can check the show the ignored issues checkbox. There is a moderate issue affecting memory. This is a concatenation of strings. In the script, we can see this is happening within the fixed update. It affects memory as it has to be allocated on the memory managed heap. When this is happening frequently, for example, in an update loop or as here in the fixed update loop, you may see a frame rate drop when the garbage collector has to clear the managed heap at set intervals. I will create a second UI text object and have that display the current player is text and have the display text just display the player name. This removes the need to concatenate. As you fix issues you can update the analysis. If the issues have been fixed they are removed from the list but check to ensure new issues have not been created. The inverted call hierarchy shows the script and which method this issue is using in the call hierarchy. 
The component tag issue is appearing because I am comparing a tag using the double equals. It is much more effective to use compare tag instead as this does not result in managed allocations to memory. Then we have a moderate issue affecting both memory and CPU. Objects have been instantiated frequently and this takes a significant amount of CPU time and allocates to managed memory. The recommendation is to pull the items instead. In the script it is instantiating new audio players with every footstep. I'll fix this by giving the player an audio source with two footstep audio clips. Then switch audio clips with each step and play the audio source. This removes the need to instantiate objects. This major issue affecting GPU is creating a new copy of the render material each time it is called, impacting rendering performance. The recommendation is to use shared material instead. This recommendation will work if the material is unique to this object. However, if multiple objects share that same material, then the change to the shared material will affect all objects. Here in code, I am changing the material texture on layer to player. Each player has a unique material, so I can safely use shared material instead of just material. The recommendations in the project order to give you options to explore, but it is up to you to decide if that is the best option to optimize your project. We have a boxing allocation issue. This is where a conversion takes place. In this case, an integer being converted to an object of reference type. In the script, we see the current FPS being converted into a formatted string every frame in the update. I'll fix this by adding an extra UI text in the scene that always says FPS. Then we can set the GUI text to display the current FPS as a string with no decimal points. Now it doesn't need to convert to an object type. I'll refresh and all fixed issues disappear, except the one I chose to hide earlier. I will rehide that one. Compiler messages will display all messages that are being generated whenever the code is compiled. In this case, I have no compiler messages. The next section is Domain Reload. To use this, you will need to go to Edit and Preferences. In the Project Auditor section, ensure that Roslyn Analyzers is checked on, as it requires these to run checks on the Domain Reload. If you have created the analysis before checking on the Roslyn Analyzers, you will have to generate a new analysis for the domain reload to be analyzed. This section displays any issues that happen during the domain reload when entering play mode. Many developers choose to modify the project settings in the editor section, changing the when entering play mode settings to reload scene only, bypassing the need to reload domain every time you enter play mode. This allows developers to instantly enter play mode without having to recompile code. However, public static variables do not get reset when entering or exiting play mode, and so could cause issues. If that is the case, they will be highlighted in this section. I have placed a public static variable in a script, but have not reset its value. So it has discovered this, and explains it is not being reset. It recommends to use a runtime initialize on load method. You will then need to modify your code to include a way to reset the public static variable that suits your project's needs. And that's the code section, so now let's take a look at the assets section. The project auditor runs a check on all assets in your scene, checking for any performance issues affecting load time, CPU, GPU, memory, etc. This can save lots of time when optimizing assets in your project, as it displays useful information for all assets, making it easy to identify any that need fixing. The Asset Issues section has found a few issues. If I group by area, I can now see this audio clip is affecting CPU and load time. It is a large audio clip that has to be fully loaded before the player can begin the level. The recommendation is to check Load in Background, and the level can then start a lot quicker after only part of the audio clip has been loaded. With the Project Auditor window docked, I can double click on the issue and it takes me to the audio file. I'll check the Load in Background checkbox and change the load type to Streaming. There are two smaller audio clips. These are set to decompress and load, but they are small enough for that not to affect the load time, so I can choose to ignore the issue. These two texture files are affecting GPU and quality. They do not have MIP maps enabled.
Mitmaps create a series of decreasing resolution textures based on the distance the camera is away from the object, speeding up rendering objects from a distance and improving image quality for distant objects. This has a quick fix button. Clicking this will automatically enable mitmaps for this texture. A moderate memory issue is when meshes have the read-write option enabled. This is only required if you are going to be changing the mesh during runtime. If the mesh does not change during the game, switch off read-write to conserve memory. Textures displays all textures in your game and provides useful information. With the group by option switched off, you can sort these by any of the columns. A useful one here is the size so you can find any large image files. Alternatively, you can select the group by option and group by any of the categories, for example resolution. This will quickly show how many images are saved at what resolution. It also displays all asset types in categories, each with useful information. The shaders category displays all shaders used in your game with useful information and any compiler messages associated with the shaders. Let's take a look at the project section. The project settings have been analysed. It looks for any settings that may cause issues for performance, load time, etc. Use this to ensure your build targets, resolution, texture compression or other project settings are optimised for your intended platform. It groups by system. An issue affecting build size, GPU and load time is when the optimised mesh data is disabled. This can be enabled in the project settings as well as pre-baking any collision meshes. It suggests a way to optimise the fixed time step for the fixed update. I have capped the frame rate at 30 frames per second. It is now suggesting to change the fixed time step from 0.02 .02 to 0.04. This will ensure the time step will fit perfectly into that frame rate. This is especially useful on mobile devices if you are limiting frame rates to 30 FPS. Some of the issues have a quick fix button, allowing the project settings to be automatically changed for you. Let's look at the project build. If you have done a clean build of your project, it will display key information in the build section, showing the sizes of objects within your build and the amounts of items included. This can be useful when looking to reduce build sizes, or to check that certain files have successfully been included in the build. Build steps will show a step-by-step -step guide to what took place during the build. It lists any warnings that arise, or any issues that are preventing a successful build. Once I have fixed issues and ignored others, the summary shows the progress I have made in optimising my project. This is a great way to visually keep track of optimization during development of your project. This is part of the suite of analysis tools dedicated to project optimization and works alongside the other tools such as Profiler, Memory Profiler and Profile Analyzer. To learn more about those tools, there are great videos showing you how to use those. See the links in the video description below. You can access preferences either from the Project Auditor window or from Edit and Project Preferences. This allows you to focus on individual areas. If, for example, you just want to prepare a report for code, it will then just focus on that. This can speed up the time it takes to analyse your project. The platform is chosen from your current build settings. You can, however, choose a different platform from the list depending on which modules you have installed. It is good practice to run analysis for each platform you are developing your project for. Compilation mode focuses on player mode by default. You can also run reports for development mode or editor when in play mode, when you want to analyse what is happening inside of Unity, or when using editor scripts. Roslyn analyzers are used to check domain reloads for your project and are covered earlier in the video in the domain reload of the code section. Roslyn analyzers increase the time it takes to analyze your project, so if you are looking at speeding up the analysis time, uncheck this. You also have the option to check package contents for issues, but this can increase the time it takes to prepare the analysis report. You can log the number of issues found after completing the build. Prettify saved project audit files will make the saved files easier to read. However, it will increase the saved file size. 
run the project auditor at key stages of development before milestones, beta releases or final builds. Regular audits help catch performance bottlenecks, unused assets or outdated code early, preventing problems from growing larger as your project scales. The earlier you integrate Project Auditor into your workflow, the more time and effort you can save in debugging, optimizing and iterating. You can automate running Project Auditor as part of your CI or build setup. For more information, see the documentation in the video link below. Thanks for watching.